Hello, and welcome to the Central Institute podcast. My name is Rob Bogle, and I am here with Vicki Gatchel. And today we have kind of switched roles. Normally, Vicki does the interviewing, and uh, I've been able to be a part of those. And today I get to interview Vicki. So, uh, Vicki, if you would tell us a little bit about yourself mm -hmm. and uh, kind of what you do when you're not working with uh, Central Ministries on our Central Institute. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm married to my husband, Roger. We've been married 30 years. We have four daughters. Um, three of them are grown and out of high school, and uh, one left at home with us full time, at least for a few more years. Uh, something I'm doing that's new to me this year is I'm working with a mission called The Navigators, and what I do with them is I am helping churches to grow cultures of disciple making. So that's something that's near and dear to my heart uh, and have been privileged to walk into that this year. Great. Thank you for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. um, what is maybe a family tradition that you guys do at Christmas that you guys really enjoy? Yeah, I can think of several, but I think one of our favorites is going downtown the night before Thanksgiving here in Fort Wayne and um, watching them like the lights. Uh, with the crowds. Now, this year it was very different. Uh, they didn't have a night of lights in Fort Wayne. Uh, we decided to go downtown anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> we were down there and we were kind of alone, but uh, went to the Gingerbread Festival. We were one of three families in the entire building. Uh, we went to Coney Island. There were five tables seated and the entire uh, like bar where you sit and eat your Coney dogs was empty. Um, but we still did that. We always go to Starbucks and downtown there's no seating available. <laughs> so we got our, yeah. our Starbucks and uh, we drank it in the car on the way home. But at least for us, it was, uh, yes, we always do this the night before Thanksgiving and we went ahead and kept that tradition this year. Yeah, a lot of traditions are having to adjust just a little bit this year. So yes. um, we've been talking about different Christmas songs and we've had a couple yes. different interviews. And uh, what Christmas carol, Christmas song have you chosen to share with us today? I chose A Holy Night. And uh, I've always liked that song because I like the climax in the middle when the singer hits the high note mm -hmm. and you're always hoping that they can get all the way there because <laughs> <laughs> once in a while you hear it sung and somebody just kind of misses. But when right. they hit it, it's on. And, and it's such a beautiful song. Um, so I did some research on the history of that song. Um, when we did a podcast with Doug Hood, we learned that um, Silent Night was written when wasn't it uh there was a new organ or something and it broke down and mm -hmm. they they sung it on guitar well the organ was such a piece of important equipment in the church and this was um 19th century in europe again um there was a church in france that got a brand new organ and they reached out to one of their townspeople and said hey will you write a poem in honor of the church getting a new organ so he did so and then uh, he found someone who put it to music. And so you got the French version of A Holy Night. Well, uh, not too much after that, the guy who had written the poem decided to leave the church altogether. And he got involved in some type of socialist political movement. And so he mm -hmm. kind of got banned from the church. And then they learned that the person who had written the music was not even Christian. He was Jewish. And the church at that time didn't like that either. And mm -hmm. so they said, we're not going to sing this in the church anymore. Wow. <laughs> and so in France, that, church, that song was actually banned in the church okay. in the mid-1800s. Uh, but somebody in the United States saw that, um, saw that song, and he really identified with the stanza in the third verse um, where it says, and I'm going to read it um, from the lyrics, but... Um, Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother. And in his name, all oppression shall cease. Well, this American um, composer was an abolitionist okay. and he really strongly identified with the idea of the slave being our brother and that Christ would come to abolish um, all kinds of oppression. Mm -hmm. And so he um, revived it, he put it to English lyrics, and he brought it forth to the church in America in the mid-18th century, or excuse me, 19th century, and they loved it. 
and it really caught on, and mm-hmm. it has become one of America's most popular Christmas carols. Yes. So. Yeah, that's interesting that it it kind of had a rough start where <laughs> being banned, and now today it's kind of a staple that every Christmas that's one uh, that you hear. There's been many different uh, artists who have made their little tweak on the song, but it's yeah. it's one that's very recognizable today. Yes. yes. I would say so, too. Um, There was a line in there that I thought is um, very appropriate for 2020. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe I would share that, too. That's kind of this is maybe why I have always identified with this song even prior to 2020. But I feel like this year we can use it more than ever. Um, Actually, the very first verse talks about how um, long lay the world in sin and error pining. Um, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. And I've always loved that so much because really until Jesus came and put grace upon grace, um, we didn't know what our souls were worth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, we, w- Without Christ in our life, we're in a state where... Um, we don't have a hope for the future. I feel like our whole world is kind of caught up in that lack of hope right now. Right. When is this virus going to get over? When are we going to get back to normal life? When are we going to see our loved ones? Mm-hmm. When are we going to have all the things that we enjoy? So it's kind of like we are all pining right now. And we've definitely seen um, the sin in the world. I mean, all of the controversy and fighting and racism and injustice and all those things that have happened this past year, it just points to who man is Mm -hmm. without Jesus. Right. And so to me, I have always loved this song because to think about, you know, he's our hope. Right. And and just the thrill of knowing that our hope is coming. Um, Something I learned only in recent years about Advent is that the early church used Advent to think about Jesus' second coming. But mm-hmm. in recent years, we think of it during the Christmas season and specifically focused on when Jesus came as a baby. Right. But I feel like this year more than ever, we can go back to the original meaning, which is like, Jesus, come back and get right. us. <laughs> you know? We're ready. We're ready for renewal. We're ready for what we're really pining for, mm-hmm. which is the ability to be with Jesus right. and to see like the, his grace over our life to remove um, the sin, to remove the error mm-hmm. and to be in a state where we are just with him in his presence um, in that new and glorious morn. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that with us. That yeah. that's a good uh, thing for us. Maybe this year, as we're singing that song, to really think not just about uh, Christ's first coming right. in the manger, but looking forward to that second coming and the hope that we have in Him. Yeah. So thank you for uh, sharing that with Absolutely. us and giving us your time this morning. <laughs> and we'll have another uh, song to look at next week. Thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks everybody.